now with three of America's top police chiefs for their perspective on this crisis rocking the country's cities. Art Acevedo from Houston, Terrence Monahan, the chief of department here in New York City, and C.J. Davis from Durham, North Carolina, also president of the National Organization of Black Law Enforcement Executives. And Chief Davis, let me begin with you. Nine days of protests right now. Something deep seems to be happening in the country. So what do you say to those protesters who believe that policing in America is plagued by systemic racism? Well, I would have to say, uh, first of all, good morning and thank you. Uh, I would have to say that uh, the emotions and feelings that we see expressed out on the streets of cities all across the country are, are felt in a way that are substantiated. There have been years and years of systemic racism in law enforcement. And for many years, Noble has been on the forefront of those conversations to try to impact change. But I say that we should continue to work with our protesters and individuals in our communities so that they can have the opportunity and the space to express themselves. But at the same time, we also send the message that we have to take care of our community. We still have to live here. So we've got to continue to work together so that these types of opportunities to heal are done in a way where everyone is respected. Chief Monahan, you made, it a made a real point of engaging with the protesters personally, and it does appear that New York was calmer last night. Uh, but the mayor, the mayor and your department came from, for some criticism from both Governor Cuomo and the president. What's your assessment of how things went last night, and how do you respond to that criticism? Last night was a lot better with the curfew at 8 o'clock. Uh, we were able to get things under control, and we had very few incidences. Uh, I respond heavily against that criticism. The men and women of my agency have done an outstanding job in light of uh, being pelted with rocks and bottles, uh, looting throughout. We made hundreds and hundreds of arrests when necessary, but allowed peaceful protests to continue when that was going on. We have been under attack from day one. Uh, I have close to 200 officers who have been injured since this began, and those are the only ones that were willing to report their injuries. There's quite a few cops hurt, continued, brushed themselves off, and went right back out there to keep this city safe and to help us move along. So it was very encouraging last night to see that uh, we didn't have these other groups causing trouble, that we had it well under control. Thank goodness it was under more control last night. Chief Acevedo, let's talk about what's happening now in Houston. And I also want you to respond to President Trump's threat to send U.S. troops into American cities if the mayors and police chiefs cannot keep things under control? Well, I think that our, our governor has already responded to that, and this is Texas. Uh, we have our cities well. Uh, we're keeping them safe. Uh, things are uh, doing, going well here, and we, we don't need any support in terms of federal troops. Uh, and so the, the best position is the local police that knows the community, knows our activists, and most importantly, is trusted by and large, by the majority of the people here in Houston and throughout our state. Chief Davis, what do we do going forward? You've seen some calls in Congress now for a national <clears throat> ban on chokeholds and that kind of neck restraint that we saw ended up with the death of George Floyd. Some departments already don't use them. Do we need a nationwide ban? We, we not just need a nationwide ban, George. We also need nationwide standards. And it's my belief and my organization's belief as we continue to speak with Congress and other legislators that unless we have sweeping changes in police reform and that policies aren't treated like a smorgasbord, the agencies have an opportunity to say we will take chokeholds and, or no, we won't take chokeholds. I believe that we need to have sweeping changes in police reform where we are supported with legislation and that uh, agencies are... Um, held accountable for accreditation to ensure that everybody, every agency, large and small, have the best practices in place, or we're going to continue to see these. We don't want to see this anymore. So we definitely need some standards in our police reform. Chief Monday, what kind of reforms do you think would be helpful in this moment? Listen, it's a matter of, uh, of being able to speak with one another, and that's what it's about. Whatever reforms there are, this is, it's, it's important that we all see one another as human, and that's what's going to move this forward. We have to talk. Every agency is different. You know, I know Art, I know CJ. My agency is different than theirs. Every leader has to be able to take a good, hard look at their agencies and see what they need to do 
to be able to bridge that gap between their cops and the communities because we got to be one. If we're not one, we're not doing the job. Why, why do you, let me just follow up on that. Why do you think so many people out in the country feel that gap so deeply? Listen, there's been a lot of incidents that have happened and it hits the media and it's a major play. <clears throat> one incident in Minnesota has gone throughout this country. You know, every cop in this country has said something that that was a horrible event in Minnesota, but all 800,000 law enforcement officers in this country are now paying that price. We understand that there has to be change, that we have to work together. We have to condemn it when we see an officer do something completely and totally out of line. But then understand that is not all 800,000 officers doing that. That we as an agency, we as a police department, we as law enforcement, we understand and we work together with our communities. We all want the same thing, whether it's police or communities. We want to keep our city safe. Chief Acevedo, you have George Floyd's funeral coming up in Houston next week. Tell us about the preparations for that. Well, we're working closely with the family. Uh, yesterday, we helped them. Uh, we helped them plan the funeral, and uh, we're really uh, uh, honored by the fact that uh, they've allowed us to work with them because we want to bring him home and make sure that uh, his funeral is about him and not people trying to hijack uh, his memory and and his and, and his death that needs to lead to the reforms that we're talking about. And, I, and as, as far as reforms go, let me just tell you, police chiefs in our profession, we're going to put those reforms forward and then we're going to let the people of this community know which Democrat and which Republican and which independent voted, how they voted, because they're going to have to make a choice. We're not going to let them vote, uh, vote in the dark uh, where nobody even knows what they're doing and people don't even know who they're voting for. We will make sure that the people of this community that's hurting, that want change, we're going to offer that change and then we're going to let them know who did what so they know who to vote next time, who they vote for when they go back to that voting booth. Chiefs, I am so glad we had the chance to talk to all of you this morning. Thank you for sharing your perspective and your obviously very strong and heartfelt views. Thanks very much. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.